Good morning everyone and welcome to our morning Bible reading. This morning we're going to be reading Proverbs chapter 11. So let's read it together and as usual it's from the New Living Translation. Proverbs 11. The Lord detests the use of dishonest scales, but he delights in accurate weights. Pride leads to disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Honesty guides good people, dishonesty destroys treacherous people. Riches won't help on the day of judgment, but right living can save you from death. The godly are directed by honesty. The wicked fall beneath their load of sin. The godliness of good people rescues them. The ambition of treacherous people traps them. When the wicked die, their hope dies with them, for they rely on their own feeble strength. The godly are rescued from trouble, and it falls on the wicked instead. With the words, the godless deeds, the godless destroy their friends, but knowledge will rescue the righteous. The whole city celebrates when the godly succeed. They shout for joy when the wicked die. Upright citizens make are good for a city and make it prosper, but the talk of the wicked tears it apart. It is foolish to belittle one's neighbour and a sensible person keeps quiet. A gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. Without wise leadership, a nation falls and there is safety in having many advisors. There is danger in putting up security for a stranger's debt. It's safer not to guarantee another person's debt. And we'll end there. Let's go on, because I just realised that I read Proverbs 11 yesterday. So let's start and read Proverbs chapter 12. To learn, you must love discipline. It is stupid to hate correction. The Lord approves of those who are good, but he condemns those who plan wickedness. Wickedness never brings stability, but the godly have deep roots. A worthy wife is a crown for her husband, but a disgraceful woman is like a cancer in his bones. The plans of the godly are just, the advice of the wicked is treacherous. The words of the wicked are like a murderous ambush, but the words of the godly save lives. The wicked die and disappear, but the family of the godly stands firm. A sensible person wins ambition, but a warped mind is despised. Better to be an ordinary person with a servant than, a self, than to be self-important but have no food. The godly care for the animals, but the wicked are always cruel. A hard worker has plenty of food, but a person who chases fantasies has no sense. These are jealous of each other's loot, but the godly are well rooted and bear their own fruit. The wicked are trapped by their own words, but the godly escape such trouble. Wise words bring many benefits and hard work brings rewards. Fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. A fool is quick tempered, but a wise person says calm when insulted. An honest witness tells the truth, a false witness tells lies. Some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. Truthful words stand the test of time, but lies are soon exposed. Deceit fills hearts that are plotting evil, joy fills hearts that are planning peace. No harm comes to the godly, but the wicked have their fill of trouble. The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in those who tell the truth. The wise don't make a show with their knowledge, but the full broadcast their foolishness. Hard work um, and become a leader. Work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become a slave. Worry weighs a person down, and encouraging word cheers a person up. The godly give good advice to their friends. The wicked lead them astray. Lazy people don't even cook the game they catch, but the diligent make use of everything they find. The way of the godly leads to life, that path does not lead to death. Amen. And that's Proverbs chapter 12. All that Solomon's talking about, it's all about our actions, isn't it? It's all about how our actions are seen and interpreted. And like I said before, we can interpret these actions with regards to earthly actions, but also heavenly actions as well, or heavenly consequences. 
um, and, and how things work out. But one thing which is very practical um, is verse 18. Some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. You know, our words are something which are really, well, the tongue is called the two-edged sword, and it really is. Um, our words can either heal or our words can cause damage. I don't know if you've ever seen the children's talk, um, which involves a tube of toothpaste, where you get the children to squeeze out some toothpaste. And then whenever they squeeze quite a lot out, you ask them to put the toothpaste back into the tube again. Uh, obviously you can't. Um, some people try to be smart and say, oh, I'll, I'll cut the bottom of the tube and try and get it in that way. Um, but then the tube is damaged. And if you're using a toothpaste, which is like three colours coming out, you'll never replicate that coming back out again. It's, it's, it's always going to be damaged. And the same is true of our words, isn't it? Once we say something, it's out there. It's a bit like, um, you know, whenever we're, we're using live stream, and once we've said something, it's out there forever. Like we started off this morning, Proverbs 11, I said 12. Oops, you know, slight mistake. But, but translate that into something that I say about somebody, and you say something which cuts them, which hurts them, you can't take that back. And no matter how often you say sorry, they still remember. And no matter how often they say, that's okay, I accept your apology, they still remember what you said. You know, our words can be damaging, but our words can also be healing. We can draw alongside friends who are suffering, who are in times of trouble, and, and we can let them know that we are with them. When somebody is discouraged, we can say something to encourage them. You know, we talk about coming alongside somebody and putting our arms around them. Yes, we do that, or we want to do that physically, we can't at this stage. But we can do it instead with our words, can't we? Our words and our actions. And that's what Solomon's trying to get at. Our words and our actions show if we are wise or foolish. And he encourages us to be wise. And to be wise in the eyes of God, not in the eyes of the world. So it's... it's, it's it's having God standards, not the world standards. So yes, today is Friday. We head off into the weekend. How's your weekend going to be? It's probably going to be very different from a normal weekend in that with lockdown, we're not doing a lot much, but we still, we still will still see people either on camera, we'll talk to them on telephone, we'll see our family around us. And through our words and through our deeds, we can help them, encourage them, and show them God's love. Or we can be horrible to them. How do you want somebody to treat you? How would you want someone, how would you want your family to be treated? How are you going to treat those that are around you? That's the challenge that we face. We're going to pray in a moment, but just let me remind you that tomorrow is our day of prayer for uh, everything that's going on in the world at this time. So we're asking um, people from 8 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock at night just to join in, just during a half hour slot. Um, if you'd like to actually put your name against one of those slots, let me know um, and I'll do that. It's afternoon and evening that we need covered at the minute. Um, I'm going to pu publish the PowerPoints later on. Today I'll put up a snap and then tomorrow morning I'll put up a post at 8 o'clock in the morning um, for the start of it. Uh, if you want to instead go on to our website, which is strain.org. And under our weekly announcements, again, you'll see that document which has suggested readings and prayer points for tomorrow. Please feel free to join in. If, if, if you can't do it tomorrow, that's fine. If you can do it on Sunday or sometime during the week, please just don't think that it's, it's tomorrow that we pray. It, you know, we can pray at any time, even today. Um, just have a look at those prayer points and bring something to God in prayer. So let's pause now and let's pray. Father, thank you again for another day. Thank you again for keeping us safe and bringing us into this day and the blessings of this day. Um, we, we thank you for them already. Lord, you are a great God who knows us and loves us. And at any time we can stop and we can talk to you. And we know you always hear us. We know you, you always answer us and we thank you for that. Lord, for the challenge of our words, help us to be kind. Help us to speak wisely and kindly and supportively to others. 
not to be judgmental towards them, not to be cutting, but Lord, to use uh, words and actions which will encourage them and which will show your love. And in everything this day, Lord, just, just help us and guide us and direct us in the conversations that we have uh, with other people, Lord, just give us that wisdom. So thank you for now, Father, and continue with us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks. I see you again. Uh, all being well on Monday morning at again half nine. If you're free on Sunday morning and you're not doing church elsewhere, join us online for church at 11 o'clock. We'd love to see you. Um, and in the meantime, just take care and stay safe. Okay, bye.